friends, it's Amanda May with Ardith Design. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited that you're here. It's my 31st floss tube episode where we celebrate all things counted cross stitch, historic needlework, contemporary needle art, and everything in between. I am so grateful that you came to hang out with me today. Here in Maryland, it is cold and they're oscillating our weather predictions between five and eight inches of snow, or it might not happen at all and there might be rain. So we'll see what the next few days brings. Today is Monday, February 18th, and I went out and about and braved the cold, chilly weather. <laughs> and I am home and filming and I'm so excited to be here. This is my birthday week and I am so excited to be turning another year older, hopefully another year wiser. <laughs> I've set some goals for myself this year. Ooh, as the whole house shakes from the wind. <laughs> I've set some goals for myself this year. I'd love to learn punch needle and I'd love to finish two quilts. <laughs> and of course, you know, make all the things, but I got to get started on making all the things. <laughs> I had a really lovely weekend and for my birthday, I went out to a lunch with the kids to one of my favorite Mexican food restaurants and I had a chili relleno, which is fantastic. And then we drove into Catonsville which most people, they don't really know the town of Catonsville. It's, they know of Baltimore, and Baltimore is the home of the large needlework store called The Stitching Post. <laughs> and I was fortunate enough to go and get my birthday present, which is a little pair of scissors. So my husband bought me some scissors and then I always, you know, <laughs> trying to be silly, I retrofitted it on the back of this like kid's lanyard where this used to hold lip gloss. <laughs> but I can now, I tried stitching with it and put the put it on the lanyard and now I have my stitching scissors. <sighs> So I'm happy to say I now have a new pair of red scissors and I love them. And we, I got some fancy floss while I was there and some fabric and it was just a really fun little trip. We went around uh, Howard County and Baltimore County and we did all the things. <laughs> and I have so many treasures to show you from my expedition. I also had to plan and coordinate a children's birthday party. And <laughs> I made the ever requested rainbow jello. Rainbow jello and just, you know, making all the things. So today's episode is focused on just showing you all my goodies and talking about my upcoming plans, stitching plans for this upcoming year. I'd love it if you hung out with me and saw all the goodies. I've got a, I got some real, I got some treasures. So let's get started. First off, I got, I went to Joanne's Fabric today because they had their big President's Day sale. And they were saying DMC door busters. There was no DMC door busters. Oh well. But I got my wreath to make my Priscilla and Chelsea uh, coffee filter wreath for spring. And I'm so excited. So I got that. So baby steps. And then I got this remnant fabric piece for uh, my kids asked to make a baby doll blanket for their baby dolls. And they picked out this fabric. So we got, I gotta get started on that. And at, I ran out of my pins to pin my, my pieces. So I got the, I, I made sure 
that it said stainless steel, rust proof, and it's the bridal lace pins. So I'm really happy I got these. Uh, I wanted to get the smaller size ones. They, they're called sequin pins, but the, none of the packaging said whether or not they were rust proof. So I got all of the bridal and lace pins and it's okay, I'm, I'm gonna get this going. For my birthday, I got my the scissors, the, the trip to the stitching post, lunch, and then because I love springtime, I love Easter, I love carrots, you know, I love all the things, I love pastels. <laughs> I got this little bunny. She, I got her, um, she was at Home Goods, so I got her today. And I love her. And she's got a little yellow dress on. And she's got like the, the bottom base, it almost feels like gravel. But I, I saw her little face, and I know she's just mis machine stitched. But wouldn't that look cute little face to do that and cross stitch? And she looks like she's done with, um, she's got like a muslin. And then they put the little wire ears. This is so cute. And then I got for my spring decorations, because I love carrots. <laughs> this is my other little present I got. And they're like the raffia carrots. So I wanted to show you before I start decorating, I have to pull down all of my Valentine's Day stuff and get ready for spring. And I, of course, I'm working on Briar Rabbit with my color conversion. And oh my goodness, she's almost done. And I'm really excited about her. I will say that I am having just a heck of a time finishing her. And I think for me, I'm really struggling with the count of the fabric and it's really floppy it's a floppy fabric and it's I mean it's gorgeous in person but I'm just struggling with the count um I, I typically can only stitch in the evenings after my children have gone to bed and my lighting is subpar to say the least so you pair me being a mom who's tired at the end of the day, subpar lighting, <laughs> and a small count fabric. I mean, it's not the fabric's fault, <laughs> but I'm just having, I am just having a time. And I had really hoped to have this done in time for this episode, but it just didn't happen. But nonetheless, bunnies, carrots, and I am really, really hoping to have her done next week in order to have her finished and I want to have her fully finished. I mean, wouldn't that be fantastic if I FFO'd her? And because I got one of the trays and I'm really excited. I found this one and I loved the look of the, it looks like they took the word, the, the metal thing. Anyway, I wanted to do a Priscilla finish or Java Girl Stitches, she's been doing some lovely finishes as well. So I was hoping I can finish her in the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch style. Put it in a rusty crusty tray. So we'll see, I, like I said, I have, I have it almost done with my color conversion. I got my bridal lace pins, my stainless steel pins and you know, I'm gonna get there. And hopefully I'll have, in the next couple weeks, my coffee filter wreath done in order to show. And I'm gonna try to follow the tutorial on doing that. Yeah, and what was my last present? Okay, scissors, my bunny. Oh, okay, look at this. It is so cute. I love buttons. I love buttons. I have jars of buttons. I have tins, like the cookie, the, um, what were they, like Danish butter cookie tins. I have, I have beads like in an old yogurt, <laughs> like the plastic yogurt containers. I mean, recycle, right? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> 
Now I officially have my own button box. And I love it so much. I, I This is a present that I bought for myself and I am very happy about it. It's missing the top. It looks like it might've had like a cute little handle. Oh well. And it's the bottom. It's got the, the metal here and they literally wrapped it around. It's got wooden beads and it is made made in Japan, the Norcrest. I did not pay that. I paid more than that, but it's in pencil and made in Japan. And I just love it. Very mid-century. Now I have a button box. <laughs> all right. Are you ready for more show and tell? These are all the goodies that I got on my birthday weekend exploration. And I've received a lot of questions about where do I get my stuff? Well, let me just say that I love to thrift, acquire, and I've gone to antique stores, thrift stores. I don't really go to estate sales, and that's just a matter of logistics with two small children, and it just, I don't go to estate sales. I would love to go to estate sales, and I have never in real life been to an auction. I've always wanted to go to a real life auction. But I, living in Central Maryland, I've gone to barn sales and I will insert some pictures. Should we do it? Yeah, right here. I'm gonna insert <laughs> pictures of some barns in an area around um, here where I live. And, oh, so I, barn sales, all the things, and antique stores, word of mouth. I've had, I've actually had people like bring me stuff, which I'm forever grateful for. So I love to just to keep goodies and treasures out of the landfill. And anywho, um, this week I found some awesome treasures. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> The coolest thing about going on a treasure hunt with the whole family is one, you have help, right? You're not just doing it alone with kids like all over you, but you have another set of eyes. And my husband, I am like really training him about needlework. And he found half of these treasures. He did, not me. He found them and he brought them to me. He's like, look at what I found. Oh my gosh. So are you ready? Look at what he found. I have it backwards. Okay. This is a needle point bell pull. Cherries, pears, apples, flowers. I want to say that or violets maybe uh, leaves great. Oh, grapes. <laughs> grapes. More cherries. And it repeats the repeating pattern. The back is a cream yellow velvet, velveteen. It's all stitched in needlepoint. And this sucker is big. This is the biggest bell pull I have ever found. It has got the amazing hardware. The back is just gorgeous. And this sucker, I mean, I, it's, it's wider than my than my wingspan here <laughs> and it's awesome so this is one of the first treasures we found and then I I felt like I hit the jackpot because then I found a bell pole that never happens <laughs> this is um, also needle point and it has Petty point. Now, I always called it petite point, but I was told that is incorrect. So, petty point. And you can see the small, small stitching here of the flowers. And you can see this difference in the stitch. These are really, really small, and these are quite large in comparison. Now, this is all done in wool. 
yarn, wool fibers. The back is red velvet and it's just lush and gorgeous. I want to say those are calla lilies, but I could be mistaken. And it also has the gorgeous metal hanger. And I just was so excited to find two bell poles with the hardware. Now I've come across them before and they've been on Ada fabric with no hardware, with tassels, without tassels, dirty, you name it. These are the most beautiful wool needlepoint bell poles and I am so happy that I was able to rescue them. The next item that I found was a really cool frame and I, I bought it expressly for the frame, but now that I look at it, I'm kind of feeling like I can't take it out of the frame. <laughs> I got this, it's got the gold frame and the print, but what I liked about it, what I found really cool was the mat is a green velvet mat. Uh, green velvet, and then I looked at the back and the, New York, the framer, so very mid-century with the green velvet mat. <laughs> the next piece I found, holy cannoli. Look at this mid-century piece. Now this is a Crowell embroidery piece. It's an astrological piece and Leo. And <laughs> uh, look at these little, look at these little guys. Look at his little face his little eyelashes, he's holding up his sign, the kitty cat, the lion. Look at her with her little hula hoop. Look at that cutie and her bow. What I loved about this piece, it is on linen. As you can see, the piece is very dirty. And I just felt like that is all the more reason to bring it home in order to save this piece from being thrown away in the dumpster. This piece has a lot going for it. Number one, it's kitsch. People love mid-century kitsch. It brings back childhood memories. It brings back the feeling of warmth and home. This is also awesome as far as a piece for movie sets and for plays and theater to create ambiance in a room because, I mean, how many people are replicating this, right? Now, I got this, it had been professionally framed and it looks like it's something that it will need to be taken out of the frame and cleaned or I can leave it as is. And the rusty crusty, <laughs> as Priscilla and Chelsea say, might just be the ticket that adds to the charm this is something I could see like in the set of um, oh my gosh all like <laughs> royal tannin balms like I get see it kind of in that whimsical look anyway I love it I love mid-century modern the astrology stuff is great I it's Nobody that I know of is a Leo, <laughs> so I can't necessarily hang it, but I just love the kitsch and the cuteness of it. So I had to rescue it. <laughs> the next piece that we found is really fun. And by we found, I mean my husband found this piece and he brings it to me and he goes, oh my gosh, you need to get this and I'm cracking up. And I said, yeah, I love the frame and the mat. Like, look, at it's all professionally framed. He goes, yeah, look. He goes, you know why I like this piece so much, Amanda? I said, why, why do you like this piece so much? He goes, look, they have a little jewel. And he goes, look at that metallic stitching. You guys and gals, my stitching friends. <laughs> he is telling me why this piece is special the frame, the mat, the metallic threads, and the treasures. I love it. <laughs> and then I got this piece, this next piece, and I thought, okay, what can I do 
Like, what can I use this for? And my husband goes, you know, you get it, and then you'll put your display stuff on for Nashville next year. Well, I can't argue with him if he's going to say that. You know, we're thinking future, right? Thinking of how I'm going to keep going with this designing stuff and make it official. <laughs> so I got this really fun display rack. It's got a pineapple on Ada. It's got, it's padded. It's very dirty, but I really like the, the frame. The person has it mounted in. It's heavy and it's ready to hang or, you know, other stuff to display. And I'm just so excited. So there is my pineapple. If I get everything prepped, if I get my spoon racks ready, if I get all of this stuff ready, maybe next year, 2020, it might be my year. <laughs> okay, and in the celebratory mode of hashtag buy all the trivets, Bindi Stitchy, Michelle Garrett, and myself have been exchanging via floss tube our love for decorative trivets. And I found two. <laughs> I am very excited. The first one is just basic, made in Taiwan, 1980s, maybe late 70s, early 80s strawberries. It's got the nice hook. <laughs> and then this one is super fun. It's the, you know, the meat and cheese platter. And I love the board, you know, put a, put a cross stitch on it. It's got the hole here to where I could ha have the, the hanging thing. So I'm just, you know, stockpiling my trivets for my finishing parade party. Hopefully that'll be coming up in this, this year's floss tube at some point of 2019. <laughs> So those are my Save the Stitches and Stitching Supply acquisitions that I got this past weekend for President's Day. And then I scored, I mean, I scored on getting pattern books and leaflets and charts and all the things. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. I got, because I love quilt patterns and even though I, have, I haven't been quilting, I had to get it anyway. This is these are all used. I didn't I didn't purchase these new. So I got chicken. I got the storybook farm cows. This block three. I have a couple other like the snowman kits from McKenna Ryan. So this is like the whole quilt, and I got the cow, and then I got back on the farm. Also McKenna Ryan. Look at that barn and the rooster. I love it. Okay, are you ready? I got a prairie schooler. Sorry if you can hear that. That is my child running and screaming. They're supervised right now, I promise. <laughs> I got prairie schooler, so I need to start patriotic stitching. And with Prairie Schooler, I don't know if I need to just stay tried and true and keep the colors as is, or if I'm allowed to change up the colors. And I say that because not only did I get Prairie Schooler Santa, I got the Town Musician Sampler. What I liked about this is it's got a donkey on it, or he might be a mule, a mule. The dog, the cat, and the rooster. I don't know if that's something I'd want to stitch without the sampler top. The model here shows it stitched on Ada and finished like this, but the colors, I'm wondering if I can change it up. But I have never seen this stitched in real life, this Prairie Schooler, and so I'm not sure if it is out of print or what, or I don't know. But it said it's book four Prairie Schooler, and it's dated, I want to say this is from 1984. And they have a bunch of, uh, anyway, it's on the old cardstock. So this is original printing. So those are the two Prairie Schooler patterns I got. Then I got this sampler. And it's also, I want to say it's Homespun Elegance. Yep. Sandra. 
I got that. I got, oh, this is for, this is a kit. And I absolutely love it. And it's a little barn kit. And what I like about it, it says it's counted cross stitch. And it has enough of the materials for the barn and the silo. But what I like about it is that it's, it, it's saying it's 14 count plastic, like the plastic canvas, but it feels more malleable and it feels like it has more of a give than the tradition, the other plastic canvases that I've seen in the past. I have never done a plastic canvas before, nor have I done a perforated paper kit. And I have been nervous about doing a perforated paper kit because stitching in hand, I'm afraid that I'm gonna break the paper. I mean, I have young children like running and jumping. I, Anyway, so this, what I like about it is that there is some give to, obviously I'm not gonna sit there and like st make stress the plastic off enough for it to break, but I like that, <sighs> excuse me. <laughs> I really like this. So I, I feel like I'm tempted to make this. I got another little book of samplers. There's a, like a cornucopia one. I don't know. It None of them are like jumping out at me going, yes, you must stitch me. But after watching Kitten Stitcher and Saltbox Stitcher and all the sampler stuff, I feel like I would be doing samplers a disservice if I didn't collect all the samplers. <laughs> Okay, and then I got the Leisure Arts publication, of course, the quintessential duck and goose. But I got it um, for this little pattern here. It's got the little lambs, and I think it's so cute for for spring. I'm like, I have to stitch a lamb, right? It, and then, oh my gosh, have you seen Farm Girl, her Instagram? Oh my, oh my heavens. And her videos, it's kidding season, kid dean season all those little baby goats and the little totes oh my gosh dead on the floor so adorable i grew up in california with neighbors who had goats and so they would have like fresh goat cheese every day and there's the chickens and the eggs and i every time i would go over to my friend's house they would have the fresh goat cheese with the dried parsley on top and it was like spreadable cheese oh my gosh the most amazing thing so I'm watching Farm Girl, Michelle, and it's just bringing back all these memories. I'm going, I need to stitch a little goat. <laughs> and then I find a pattern for a lamb and a donkey and a mule and a rooster. <laughs> so I'm like, I need to find a pattern with a goat. And so that, I put that on in the universe. <laughs> all right, not cross stitch related, but this book had to come home with me on account of it had some pins on it. And I pricked my finger and I said, well, if I'm gonna bleed over the book, I better buy it, right? And it is wood fiber flowers, very mid-century. And so that came home with me because I need more hobbies. <laughs> and then I got a needlepoint book and I found this at Restore in Columbia and they are like moving their location. So everything was like 40% off. So I got this book for a dollar and was like, and again, um, I, I saw the pattern here for the game board. And then there were just some really kind of wacky, whimsical things. Like, Eye of the Tiger. You know? <laughs> oh, what did I like? Oh, it was this butterfly pillow. And of course, I don't needlepoint. However, you can translate needlepoint, a lot of it, into cross stitch, right? I mean, read the chart, right? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> and then here is my last awesome find of the day. I found this today, this afternoon. So pumped. So be before doing the video, I looked all through it and I marked what I want to show you. This is super cute. It's got the children's favorites. There's the mermaid and the seahorses and there's a little bunny with the carrots. So I said, yep. Gotta have me that one. This book is beautifully done. I'm very happy. Here's some other the childhood favorite stuff. And I just wanted to show you a couple things. This is a Better Homes and Gardens edition. And I just, 
I really liked it and all the charts are in color and they kind of have like a showing you how you can do it all you stitch it all together or you know separate it and I thought of Amy loves toads with this one because it's got the butterfly and the frog and the animals and I love the mushroom uh, this one I liked very farm but it doesn't look 80s kitschy farm I st so I, I really liked that the country stitches then I loved this one under the sea with the mermaid and the crab I thought that was really fun and then of course Valentine's Day and Easter look at those cute little things so I just, I had to have that book too, right? Stitch all the things. <laughs> oh my gosh. So those are all my goodies for this week. Thank you for enjoying, her coming and doing show and tell with me. I am really hoping to start decorating for spring and Easter. And I hope to have at least one of my stitches done to show you for next week. I am so happy that you came to join me. My birthday, the birthday week, everything went, went swimmingly and exhaustion aside, I'm just happy to be here. If you have any questions, you comment below. You can always message me. I'll include that as well. Um, feel free to like, subscribe, hit the little bell button, the notification button, and let's see what adventures are in store for next week. <laughs> Until then, have a great stitching week. Take care.